In this video, we demonstrate our visual analytics system M-square lens to explain multimodal models for sentiment analysis. First, speakers' opinion videos are transformed into visual, acoustic, and language features. Then, the system produces multi-level and multi-faceted explanations of model behavior based on the feature attribution methods. Our explanatory interface consists of five views. The user panel displays the descriptive statistics about the model performance and dataset. Then the summary view presents a global summary of the importance of individual modalities, as well as their interactions using a three-layer augmented tree-like layout. The templates view and projection view complement each other for subset-level explanations. Specifically, templates view summarizes frequent and influential templates of feature sets in a table. The projection view supports multifaceted explorations of instances that have features of interest. Finally, the instance view provides local explanations by visualizing the important features and the context like raw videos and transcripts of individual instances. After selecting the dataset and the model, E1 felt interested in how individual modalities and their interplay contribute to the model predictions. By looking at the second layer of the summary view, the longest bar to the left and widest range of dots in the B-swarm plots showed that the language modality has the largest influence among the three modalities. Then E1 examined the last layer where the dominance group with the widest barcode charts shows at the top. Within the group, he discovered that the longest bars attach to the language modality, and the color of the prediction barcode aligns well with that of the language barcode, thus E1 concluded that the language also plays a leading role in the dominance relationship. He noticed that there are a group of dense blue bars appearing at the end of the language barcode where the errors are relatively large. Therefore, he brushed this area to find what features or their combinations cause the high errors. After sorting the templates of the brushed instances in descending order of error in the templates view, Iwan found that the template, prawn plus part, appears at the top. It has one child feature, not, which negatively influences the predictions. Next, he clicked, not, to see the details about this feature in the projection view. Zooming in on the word, not, several similar negative words like, wouldn't, and, didn't, are observed. They were all located in a red area indicating large errors. E1 speculated that the model cannot deal well with negations. Subsequently, he lassoed these words to closely examine the corresponding instances in the instance view. To further evaluate how the model handles negations, E1 started with the instances that have large errors in the table. He noticed that when double negations appear in a sentence, the model tends to treat them separately and regards both of them as indicators for negative sentiment. However, these double negations like not, sin, reflect positive sentiment. Moreover, he observed that negations always have significant negative influences on the predictions and the model fails to interpret the true sentiment. For example, he found a case where the starting phrase, I really like, demonstrates the true positive sentiment of the sentence. However, the model fails to extract the keywords and just relies on the negation to predict negative sentiment. In the second case, E1 referred back to the dominance group in the summary view. Here, a collection of red bars from the prediction barcode indicates the visual modality dominates the predictions, and the error line suggests a low error rate. Motivated by this observation, E1 brushed this red bar to investigate the patterns in the visual features. In the templates view, face emotion has the largest support. After unfolding the row, he found that, joy plus sadness, is a frequent and important combination. This intrigued him to find out how a contrary emotion pair co-occurs. After clicking the templates, the corresponding glyphs are highlighted in the projection view. Most of them are found outside the red area, which verifies that the instances with, joy plus sadness, often have small prediction errors. Through browsing the instances, E1 noticed all the face parts of the corresponding glyphs in the projection view have thick strokes, which suggests intense facial movement. When he watched the original videos, the bounding boxes of joy and sadness always popped up as important video features. Hovering on these boxes E1 examined the contained facial action units, which are generally involved in the facial expression movement. Office. Their branches are listed on their website at JenningsCapital.com. I'm Samantha Deitcher for InvestmentPitch.com. 
Hence, E1 concluded that the intense and rich facial expressions triggered the movement of the action units in joy and sadness, and the models seemed to capture these important visual facial expressions. We are invited to a special event that includes an invitation, so let's take a look at how should we respond to it. I am happy. In conclusion, E1 observed that the language modality often dominates the predictions, and the model cannot handle the negations very well. In addition, the model seemed to capture the intensive facial expressions in the visual modality.